Today we're comparing the Wacom Cintiq 16 with the iPad Pro, specifically when the iPad Pro is connected to a Mac via sidecar. I think that the iPad Pro is a great standalone tablet, but what it can or can't do changes quite drastically when it's connected via sidecar. With that out of the way, let's take a look. The Cintiq 16 retails for $650 while the cheapest iPad Pro available is priced at $800. The Cintiq 16 screen is 4 inches wider than the 11 inch iPad Pro and it's also a little bit taller, but its body is much larger because of its giant bezels. This and the fact that the Cintiq 16 is 4 times heavier than the iPad Pro means that the Cintiq 16 is much less portable so it's a lot easier to carry the iPad around with you. But when it comes to drawing and animation, the large bezels are actually pretty great because it's a place that we will naturally rest our hands on while we're drawing. Now if you really want an iPad Pro but with a screen size that's closer to the Cintiq 16, there's also the 13 inch iPad Pro, which has a slightly bigger screen but it's still super light and portable, which comes in at $1000. The iPad Pro screen is much clearer much sharper and three times brighter than the Cintiq 16s. Now normally this doesn't bother me too much, but sometimes I find that I miss fine details while working on the Cintiq 16. And this is especially obvious when the Cintiq 16 is next to a 4K monitor. Keep in mind that you usually have graphic tablets much closer to your face than monitors, so it's much easier to see individual pixels when your screen is low resolution. The iPad Pro also has a P3 display, which shows way more colors than the Cintiq's 96% sRGB. Again, this isn't something that normally bothers me, but more and more people are watching content on better and better screens. For example, iPhones and Samsung phones have been using P3 displays since 2016 or 2017, I think. So it's something that's worth keeping in mind. Now let's take a look at what comes in each box. The Cintiq 16 comes with a Pro Pen 2, a pen holder, and three standard nibs. It also comes with a whole bunch of cables, including an HDMI cable to run the display, a USB cable to register pen strokes, and a power brick that needs to be connected to a power outlet. These three cables are connected to Wacom's 3-in-1 cable, which then connects to the Cintiq, resulting in an annoying mess of cables. If you like having a neat desk, I found that a cable box helps a lot when using the Cintiq. The iPad Pro comes with a single USB-C to USB-C cable and a power adapter. You can use Sidecar with the included USB-C cable or wirelessly and they both seem to work equally well. When set up properly, there's no latency or lag when drawing on either tablet. The Cintiq surface has a bit of texture which I think feels nicer to draw on compared to the iPad Pro's glossy screen. If you're like me and you prefer drawing on a textured surface, I'm using the paper-like screen protector on my iPad, which I'll link to in the description along with everything else in this video. Now you may have noticed that the iPad Pro doesn't come with a pen, so you need to buy an Apple Pencil separately for $129. Unlike the Pro Pen 2, which is included with the Cintiq, the Apple Pencil runs on batteries, so you need to charge it sometimes. But this has never been an issue for me because I found that the Apple Pencil charges super quickly and it holds its charge for a very long time. Now let's talk about pen pressure. Pen pressure on the Cintiq 16 works exactly as you'd expect. It's quite easy to control, especially once you get used to it, and you can even customize pen pressure settings in the Wacom desktop app. The iPad Pro, on the other hand, doesn't handle pen pressure quite as well. As a standalone tablet, the iPad Pro works quite well, but when it's connected to my MacBook via sidecar, it doesn't seem to be very well optimized, so it can get quite frustrating. It's worth noting that sidecar is a relatively new feature, and it was so much worse when I tried it a couple months ago, so it seems like the people at Apple or Adobe are working on improving it, and it might get better in the future but right now it's not too great. Looking at both pens, the Pro Pen 2 and the Apple Pencil 2, I think that the Pro Pen is the clear winner here because of its customizable buttons, which I like to use to navigate around my workspace, to right click, middle click, whatever, it's customizable. You can double tap the Apple Pencil, 
but I find it to just be so uncomfortable and it doesn't seem to have any real use in sidecar. Moving on, the Cintiq 16 does not have any touch or gesture support. I expected the iPad Pro to really shine here, but it only supports very basic gestures like scrolling, copy and pasting, or undo. Tapping on the screen does nothing, which is weird, and the iPad Pro also sometimes registers my palm as a random input, which is super annoying. Now what about ergonomics? I mentioned in a previous video that the Cintiq 16 is a little bit hard to use ergonomically because you spend a lot of time just hunched over the screen and that can lead to back or neck pains. The iPad Pro is in a similar boat. You also spend a lot of time hunched over the screen, but because it's so light and the lack of cables, you can change positions a lot more often. You can pick it up and use it. You can walk around your house while you're drawing. You can lie in bed, although that probably isn't much more ergonomically good, I guess but it's nice to have options. The Cintiq 16 and the iPad Pro also both have accessories that you can buy to make using them a little bit more comfortable. For example, the Cintiq 16 has a Wacom's adjustable stand and it can also be mounted on standard Visa mounts, whereas the iPad Pro has a whole lineup of Apple and third-party accessories. So, which one is right for you? If you're a working professional, this isn't a very hard question to answer should probably just keep using the Cintiq that you already have and get an iPad if you want something that you can carry around with you easily. That also doubles as a drawing tablet if you really need an emergency drawing tablet. But if you're not a professional and you're already invested in Apple's ecosystem, then it's worth thinking about trying Sidecar. The pen pressure and overall experience is not quite perfect, but you can always upgrade to a Cintiq in the future after you've decided that art and animation is something that you want to invest time and money into. For everyone else, I recommend the Cintiq 16 over the iPad Pro. You'll have messy cables, you'll have a lower resolution display, you also won't really be able to carry it around with you easily, but the Cintiq 16 is a dedicated graphics tablet and it's so reliable. And if you plan on drawing or animating for a long time, Having tools that work reliably is so important. But I do really like the iPad Pro and I hope that Sidecar keeps improving into the future and if one day it's good enough to use as a graphics tablet, working and traveling is going to be so much easier. Now that's going to be it for today's video. As always, thank you for watching and 